Page 12, Coney Island Rag. Another piece of ragtime music. So that means there's going to be a lot of syncopation involved. Well, we'll get there. I like to look it over first to get an idea of how long it is. It's about two pages of music long, although it's actually longer than that, but I'll talk about that later in the lesson. The clef signs are treble and bass clef. There's no sharps or flats in the key signature, we're using the key of C major here. So we'll go ahead and do the scales and arpeggios for C major and A minor, because A minor also has no sharps or flats. Just do the one octave up and down fine. If you can play both of these, okay. You can try the two octaves, but it's really the trill and the tremolo exercises in those videos that will do you the most good. And 4-4 four, four time signature, I'll take it one hand at a time, make sure I understand what's going on. The right hand, and I connect everything at first, if I can. Here, we're here. That's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and then what you come up. They're all black keys, so it's okay. Come up again. Rest. Red. And then we're back here, measure 5, all eighth notes. One and two and three. Now you notice the measure seven above the staff. They have a two and a one. The two is the finger number because you're in this position. The one is an alternate finger number. So you can, if you want, rather than second finger, you can scratch up and use thumb. This way you're using these fingers on both of these. And if it kept going up the keyboard, I would do that. I would want to. I want the same fingering for each of these. But when it only goes this far, I'm just going to stay here. This is good practice. This is good exercise. Let's go down to the bottom of page 13, uh, measure 31. We're here. This is similar to what it was at the beginning. And then here. Rest. And then what's up here? You can, if you'd like, prepare that here by using a thumb on the C. Here, here, and that way you just reach up. Either way works. I mean, the way that him. This is showy because you get to move. Hey, look at me, I'm moving. But otherwise, I would use a thumb on that. Here, and I probably will. Left hand, well, you start out with just hold on, it's no big deal. Okay, then I put the hands together and see what happens. Well, the left hand is doing a lot, so it starts out. Come up a little bit. Again. And then here. These, these are together. And then here. And so you hear it, they're, that's tied, so they're not together. slowly, pretend that was slow, and I put the hands together, and then I go back over it slowly and carefully and get rid of the hesitations. Once I can do that, then I'll add in the articulation. We have accents here. Staccato. I'm just on there and flexing off here. And then let's connect. in the accents, at least I'm trying to. The left hand, there's nothing. Just play it. Put in the natural accents. One, two, three, four. Feel them? Put them in. If you don't feel them, try and feel them. <laughs> They're important. So I add in the articulation, and then once I can do that, then I'll think about the dynamics. The dynamic given applies to the melody, which is the right hand in this piece, is here moderately soft in mezzo piano. It makes the accent and note a moderately loud note. The left hand's got to be in the background. Then you have a crescendo in the second measure. Careful on these crescendos and diminuendos. You don't change where it is. You're still there. You change or you start changing your louds and softs after right after the crescendo. So the second measure, I'm still moderately soft. Then I get a little louder. A little louder. 
Yeah, I can almost do this measure at a time. So it's, huh? Yeah. And then I moderately loud measure five. Soft. Measure 17, you're loud. Measure 21, you're moderately soft. Left hand's soft. At the bottom, measure 31, you crescendo again. But remember, you're moderately soft here on the first measure, measure 31, moderately soft. A little louder. Now you're loud. And that last note is a very loud note because of the accent. So it's loud. loud. Yeah. Okay. Ideally, you, you feel the dynamics eventually. You want to just get in the feel in the music, feel the dynamics. Speed with excitement. Well, okay, it's a happy piece. It's a party piece. It's got to be accurate. So don't go beyond accurate. I think where I was going. That's too fast. Slow down. So that, it's up to you. I don't know how fast you're going, how excited you're going to get or whatever. Now for when we go where, I call it the road map. Where do we go? You look at the end of the third line on page 13, there's a DS al coda. DS means go back to the sign. You got to go find the sign. Well, isn't that fun? Let's go hunting for a sign. And I see it at the beginning of measure 13. It's above the staff. It's a really fancy looking S thing. That's the sign, believe it or not. So when we finish the measure where the DS Alcoda is here, immediately jump back to measure 13 and just keep going. Alcoda means go to coda. And the coda sign is at the top of page 13 toward the end of the line. It's the circle with the crosshairs. It has the words to coda, which is nice. You don't need the words, but the sign will do it. So when you get to that point, Rather than playing the last measure in that line, you jump to the coda and play that instead. So the third measure there at the top, or measure, what, 19? Coda. And I jump to the coda right there. So it's a couple lines longer than it looks is all is what it is. me please with a few more cups of coffee or a little later in the day I could play that a little differently and possibly a little better eh, whatever you don't have to play it that fast take it at your speed believe it or not according to the what they're showing up there it could actually go faster than that but it needs to be accurate I don't speak a lot about forms in these pieces I assume your teacher is teaching you about forms but just briefly if you look at the end of the first line on page 12, you see the double bars, the thin bars? That is the musical symbol for going from one section to another. It's like a section break. The first line is an introduction, and that, an introduction is a section on its own. So that it's all. And then measure five, the main piece starts. So it's a new section. It's like chapters in a book, you have sections in music. Well, if you look at the end of the first line on page 13, measure 20, you see another double bars. Measure 21 
it's another section. The idea is it's a different melody, it's a different message. Because in measure five, but in measure 21, it's a different melody, a different section. Doesn't have to be, but it, yes, in this case it is. And then you get down to the end of the third line where the DSL coding is, you get the double bars again. That means that's the end of that section. Now we're going back into a different section, section we've already been in. Then the coda is a section in itself, too. Like an introduction is a section, the coda is a section, too. Just in case somebody asks you about the double bars and what's going on there, it doesn't really affect how you play it. It's just the form and how the music is put together. Let's play that together very slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. Now, I'm not going to do any allows and softs. I'll do the staccatos and stuff. And we will do the DSL code and all that. So I'll give us four counts. One and two and ready and go and four and four and four and one and two and three and four and and 